Hi guys and welcome to a let's play of Vagrant Story. This was originally supposed to start be a completely blind playthrough, but when I started playing the game already, I actually lost my recording data, and so uh, I managed to get about one or two hours worth of gameplay. And when I checked my data, it was all gone, so I restarted. I thought I'd be honest with you guys, so I do know how the mechanics of this game works, but. Otherwise, I have not uh, learned much about the story of this game, and so I'd like you guys to join me and experience the story together. So, uh, Vagrant Story was originally from the PlayStation 1, uh, PSX. Uh, it is a game developed by Squaresoft at the time, now currently Square Enix. And I believe it is set in the same universe as the Final Fantasy Tactics games, which is Ivalis. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And we play a risk breaker, a government agent known as Ashley Riot. So Vagrant Story is an action RPG and it was quite lauded at the time I think if I'm not mistaken. We shall start our the introduction with some slight gameplay. And so the introduction is there to get players used to the mechanics of the game. Alright Ashley, let's go. So at the start, he you have a battle grid, uh, which reminds me of Parasite Eve uh, 1, I think. Yes, 1. Or maybe the current fallout system where you can target individual body parts. And there you go, a quick defeat of the two little grunts at the start of the game. Okay, so you're thinking, what makes Vagrant Story uh, interesting, apart from the storyline? Otherwise, isn't it just a normal standard RPG where players take actions to make attacks? Well, you'll see. Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, Vagrant Story has an actual active battle mechanic whereby you can control the density and quantity of your attacks and you can actually chain attacks uh, multiple times while increasing your risk which is uh, the bar at the top earlier risk thus Ashley, when Ashley is called a risk breaker that's where the term comes from
You doubt me, Hardin. You doubt my power. Forgive me, I did not intend. But Sydney, any longer, and there will be no escape for us. Fine then. Bring the boy and come with me. Yeah, so uh, tell me guys whether you like the voice roleplay. Don't move, Sydney. If you like it, I'll continue. I'll bring you more. And if not, I'll just skip it. I uh, can skip all the conversations in the future. I have a bow gun aimed at your heart. Now turn round slowly. You're no knight, are you? Bind your legs with that rope. Ah, a wrist breaker, a royal guard dog. Did you not hear me? Bind yourself now. This is an unfortunate turn of events. Hold it! Ashley Wright is pretty calm under pressure. Badass clothing. Sydney! I... I'm the one you want. Hardin, go quickly, go to Le Monde. You, stop! What's going on? You were most certainly dead. Leave the back from the grave stuff to the fairy tales. We get to look at all the beautiful programmer names. Thank you for making this game. In the one or two hours I played previously, I have been enjoying myself very much. You've given me quite a scratch. Show a little more respect for fairy tales, wrist breaker. The talk. One big badass dragon. But that teaches you guys to never, never break glass with your body. You get shards of it everywhere. My apologies. I've no time to toy with you. Did I just tell you not to not jump out of glass windows? But oh well, if you can survive a fatal shot to the heart, I think glass shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Let's settle this. It is a dragon that takes does physical damage, so it looks like the head or the leg does equal damage. Block. Let's just wail on it a little bit. And that does it for us to talk the dragon. Yes, when people die in this game, they disappear, which was written in this story, which you'll have to see later. But otherwise, it was a good uh, representation of why corpses disappear. 
It was probably a PlayStation limitation due to its limited memory. And I guess all the people who are playing the modern games today are being pampered quite much by computers' advanced processing capabilities and leaving dead corpses everywhere in the game. So yeah, it's nice to have a throwback to games of previous. Lemon. tutorial with a nice lens flare like a movie vagrant story I'm getting goosebumps already <laughs> no I'm kidding the body is but a vessel for the soul a puppet which bends to the soul's tyranny and lo the body is not eternal for it must feed on the flesh of others lest they return to the dust whence it came Therefore must the soul deceive, despise, and murder men. A. J. Durai. I'm not sure whether this is an actual quote from some famous person, but... Well, it is an interesting quote. It fits this game very well. So, the knights who came were not the king's men, but the cardinals. Knights of the Cross led by Guildenstern, my lord. The Crimson Blades, in direct service to the cardinal. Guildenstern led his men towards Le Monde in pursuit of Sydney. I see. Send one of your men in the armour of these holy knights, sets fire to the manor. Fire, my liege? The fool Sydney used his wyvern. We can't have witnesses telling the world now, can we? But the hostages, your family. Irrelevant. Burn it. Burn it to the ground. What of Parliament? The VKP, uh, the Valendian Knights of the Peace, have formed a squad to deal with the felons. The wrist breakers, those meddling fools. Your will, my lord? Le Monde is yours. Let no one out of the town. You can deal with Sydney and the Blades there. And Parliament? I'll deal with those watchdogs. They won't trouble you further. And the young Lord Joshua? He is my light, my soul. If aught should befall him, as you wish, my lord. And the scene cuts to the young boy in the painting of the family, which was the one kidnapped earlier in the intro scene. Am I fated to rot and wither even as I breathe? Eleven forty-two a.m. Le Monde is an old town with a history of over 2,000 years. Its walls have seen many battles. They are stronger than the mightiest forts of Valendia. And as the sun wheels through the sky, the beauty of their shifting colours surpasses them of any palace. The Grand Cathedral that towers over the town centre is a symbol of Le Monde's indomitable spirit and is the holy ground of the devout Iocas priesthood. At its height, Le Monde was a thriving community more than 5,000 people strong. 25 years ago, a great earthquake brought that chapter in Le Monde history to a close. Le Monde. Oh, it has the French A high accent, so it's Le Monde. Le Monde is easier for me to say, so I'll stick with that. Well, the two sentinels are dead, murdered. Hmm. This was the only way in. There's a great crevice preventing entry above ground. And from the sea? 
Nay, sunken reefs that rose during the earthquake form a gauntlet of whirlpools, too dangerous. You do know we sent agents in, thinking those ruins were the Malenkamp base? Not one returned. Not on account of the whirlpools, I wager. Surely it was men who killed them. How was it down there? Come down and see for yourself. According to the survivors, our com comrade Agent Riot headed out for Limon before noon. Of course, the reports were, are vague and we cannot deny the possibilities of inaccuracies, yet given that there is only one path to infiltrate Limon, this office believes the reports to be valid. What's this? That's what I'm here to find out. It does seem well fortified for a wine cellar. Oh, Le Mans wineries once fight with the best of Finlandia. Since they went out of production, the remaining vintages sell for a premium. If I find any, consider them yours. We plan to go alone. An agent with no combat experience would just be a liability. Tell me what you know about Mullenkamp and this Sydney fellow. Sydney Losterot, leader of the religious cult Mullenkamp. His real name and age are unknown, one of the many self-styled prophets of the apocalypse. So why would a cult missionary commit such a crime? I do not know what the cardinal thinks, but the VKP believes he is no prophet. Indeed, he is in dark alliance with Duke Bardova, who controls parliament from behind the scenes. That the cult is but a front. Perhaps this incident is a sign of some falling out between the two. Or merely another of the cardinal's witch hunts. There are many would-be prophets in the land these days, but Sydney is different. His prophecies ring true, and those enraptured by the way he hums re revelations as though they were simple ballads. All say the same, he is a miracle. In any case, he has a strange power. He can guess the past of those he meets. He can even read hearts. They say his charisma is such that his followers offer both body and soul to him. Sounds like you're quite taken with him yourself. Agent Riot, if I do not return by the morrow's eve, inform HQ, won't you? Godspeed. And face to face with Sydney, we sent men to monitor the abandoned mine shaft that leads to Le Monde. All were found dead. At the entrance, other bodies were found. Two Knights of the Cardinal's Crimson Blades. Our men were murdered with swords, but the Knights' wounds showed they died by their own hands. At present, we have taken the bodies into our custody, and our specialists are continuing the examination. It's an excerpt from their incident investigative report. Ah, vintage wine. Ashley Riot appreciates a good vintage. No live barrels today, thanks. A strange power indeed. Alright, so that's the introduction to... Vagrant story, so I will end the video around here. So action platformer slash RPG. Okay, so yes, I will end the video here. So uh, leave a like on the video if you are enjoying the series. Comment in the comments and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do s all sorts of gameplay. I'm planning to do. 
to complete every one of these games that I start so stay tuned for and see how badly I do at these games or um, if you actually enjoy watching people get trashed and hopefully yeah you enjoy uh, accompanying me on my journeys through all these games alright uh, so see you guys in the next video thanks for watching this is Gene signing out